Hey, what's up? This is James Miller from Dunk360.com here in beautiful South Florida, hanging out with some former NBA legends during this weekend full of events. First up is the happy hour. So let's see who we find. This is an event that we have every year, an uh, event that we bring on to everybody come in to get together, see some old faces, see some new faces, and conduct business and uh, help the transition of our, our ex-players to being retired players. Here at the Legends Banquet, catching up with some of your old teammates from Illinois, right? Yeah, Kenny Battle, Marcus Liberty are here. Hopefully Nick Anderson, who works with the Orlando Magic organization, will be here. Uh, but it's a great time. They just started bumping tribe called Quest, and that's my group. So, you know, I'm, I'm about to start moving in a minute. Who would you say was the most influential who took you under their wing the most as a teammate when you came in the league? All right. Before I came in the league, George Gervin in San Antonio. When I got to Houston, Moses, Calvin Murphy, Rudy T, Mike Newland, Lucas, and then Dr. J, you know, when you played those summer games. Okay, I was blessed. I was blessed in that time. It wasn't that big money. Yeah. These were the old school guys pulling the coattail to telling you how, hey, young fella, this is how you need to walk. So, man, I was blessed. I had a lot of them. And during your career, I'm sure you passed along the same yes, information sir. to some young players. I, 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 I was able, Craig Elo, to Jim Peterson. When I was a point guard with the Dream Team, with Ralph Dream, Rodney, Lewis, Lord. I was an old man, but I was relearning about the league. But what keeps you young? What keeps you intertwined in the game, in the NBA game? It's, it, you know what? I call college basketball, but I love the NBA. College basketball is basketball, but the NBA is jazz. It's creativity. It's funk. Okay. It's all kind of music genres mixed into one. Doug 360 here with Pat Williams. Pat, great speech. Tell us about some of the guys who motivated you the most as when you were an owner, innovating, creating teams from scratch, as you just said. Well, I've been so fortunate to be involved with some wonderful people. Jack Ramsey, when I was first in Philadelphia, we've had, I had great owners along the way that really meant a lot to me. My time in Chicago, I'll never forget Jerry Sloan, the, the great captain we had. And uh, then in Philadelphia, I was there for 12 years. We had three different owners. But that was the Julius Irving era, and Julius had a big impact on all of us, as well as the whole country. And then in uh, Orlando, I've been so fortunate the last 20 plus years, the ownership of our team is the DeVos family, the co-founders of the Amway organization. So to be uh, in the same team, the same boat with them, that, that's can't, hard to put that into words. So I've been very fortunate. We had a great speech by Pat Williams. You were a player under Jimmy Valvano. Do you see any similarities and what, what kind of effect did Jimmy have in your career? A lot of similarities. Uh, Jimmy was a great motivator. Pat's still a great motivator. And I think when you talk about success in sports and business and any of those things, it's being able to communicate uh, that passion that you have. Individually, we were okay. We had a school down the road that had Michael Jordan and Sam Perkins and James Worthy and everybody was talking about those guys. But NC State had a bunch of guys who knew their roles, they had a great leader up top in Jimmy V, and we just went out and tried to execute all the things that, uh, that he taught us. Do you think it's possible today to start a team from scratch like you did with the Orlando Magic? Well, it has happened since then. You know, we had expansion into Canada, Toronto and Vancouver, and then we had a, a, a solo expansion back into Charlotte. But listen, we, our price tag to get in in 1987, 88, 89, $32.5 million. Charlotte's the last team to come in. They came in at 300 million. So you talk about good timing. 32 million doesn't even buy you a small forward nowadays. Right. And who knows, you know, uh, years from now, uh, you're the price. So in answer to your question, the league has no plans to expand. You mentioned Dr. J giving you 47. Can you relive, relive that day for us? Do I have to? <laughs> I, heard, I knew his hands were about an inch longer than mine. And I, I read somewhere we had an extra knuckle on each finger. So when he reached his hand out to shake mine, I didn't shake it right away. I looked at it to see if the myth was true. Of course, he didn't have an extra knuckle, but I also came to the realization that I had to guard this man who was in his prime. I was humbled. I was humbled, but I, at the same time, it was one of the greatest moments of my career to be on the same stage 
as a man who I'd idolize for years. Humbled before the 47 or after the 47? I was humbled before, but uh, he put a stamp on it. Now, you played for the New York Knicks in the 80s. You were one of the original members of the Bomb Squad. What do you think about the Knicks this year? Well, I look for them to be much better. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, Coach uh, has just been doing a great job up there. They've been up and down a little bit, but they started to turn it on, and I really look for them to be doing some great things this year. Any predictions for the Eastern Conference? Ooh, the Eastern is getting a little tougher, uh, but I still think that, you know, the Knicks hand, you know, finish high. Two players that you would choose in today's game? I would have to say, I, you know, I played with selfishly who I think is the greatest point guard ever played in John Stockton. He wasn't flashy, he got the job done. He was a specialist in his field. Uh, he wasn't afraid to take risks. Um, I, I really like Tony Parker. I like what he's helped do with San Antonio. Now there are a lot of other guards out there who are probably more finesse and can put on a good show, but Tony Parker gets it done, you know, like a John Stockton. You're an analyst for the Big Ten Network. What do you think about the Big Ten coming this, this season? It will be hard to top last season, but I think, again, they, they'll probably be the top conference in the country. Michigan State should be preseason ranked number two. Uh, Michigan should be top ten. Ohio State will be right there, and Iowa will be a sleeper. So it, it'll, it'll be rough and rugged like it always is. And how about your alma mater? What are you expecting from them this upcoming season? I think they'll do well. They're going to be younger. Uh, the coach, John Gross, is doing an outstanding job of recruiting. It's only a matter of time before Illinois gets back to the level that it was when we were playing. And as an alum, as a proud alum, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. What is Robert doing now with his time? Right now, Robert Reed, I'm in Boca Raton. I'm the associate head coach, general manager for the new ABA team, South Florida Gold. Uh, my owner is Mike Watson, and he and the owner from Phoenix looking to buy the league. We're looking to move it to to bring the ABA back up to when it was Doc, Rick Barry, Charlie Scott, and all them, Moses. That's what we're looking to do. Hey, this is Robert Reed, former Houston Rocket, 1977 to 88, 81 championship, 86 with Twin Towers. Here I am on Dunk 360.